welcome everyone to our first community webinar. Um, today we'll have a, a presentation about how to use data to measure crypto adoption. We we'll have our host GJ from Flipside and Marina as a speaker. Um, so let's get right into it. Awesome. Thank you, Andre. Uh, I'm GJ. I oversee a number of community and growth initiatives at Flipside. I'm super excited for the presentation we have for you today about using Flipside's on-chain data and our data sets to measure what real adoption looks like in crypto beyond the surface level metrics. With me today to present is Marina. I'll hand it over to her in just a moment. She's community manager and does analyst relations at Flipside, but she's also a really talented analyst in her own right. So Marina, over to you. Thank you, GJ. Thank you, Andre. Um, hey, everyone. Thanks for joining today. I am Marina. I work with the analyst community over at Flipside, and um, I'm really excited to talk today about um, some of the great stuff that our analyst community has put together for um, crypto adoption, Web3 project adoption metrics. So let's uh, let's get into it. We'll look at um, using data and metrics, and we'll look at um, queries that you can use and fork and adapt for anything you might want to need uh, that some of our community has supposed to put together. So it's really um, a great pleasure to show some of their work today. Um, we have a really robust community of power users who are skilled at data and analytics, and uh, they've created over 100,000 ready dashboards that you can search and look at and filter and use. Uh, they're open source on the Flipside homepage. And today we'll look at some examples. All of these uh, will help you dive into multiple facets of user adoption and really get at some of the important metrics and um, have better data that equips your decisions. So first of all, why measure adoption? Uh, bottom line is that a compre comprehensive set of metrics that really dives beyond um, some basics that you might start with um, really leads to making better decisions. This could be understanding the allocation and impact of your funding, or helping a project with strategy or with a product. Um, whatever the decision is, a holistic, well-rounded adoption analysis is a base for understanding a Web3 project through robust and data-driven decision-making. Uh, one might wonder you know, why go through all the effort and uh, go beyond one or two go-to stats, such as uh, maybe TVL, total value locked, or maybe token price. And uh, one might kind of look at what kind of metrics are valuable to get a, um, a real measure of project adoption beyond those two surface level or those surface level things. Uh, let's look at a few buckets, types of metrics that can help you produce well-rounded and informed decisions around both your protocols. Uh, so these include having a look at users and um, diving deep into retention. Uh, looking at developer ecosystems and what new smart contract recreation activity looks like. Um, also looking at four ecosystems with tokens, token distribution, and one might want to understand uh, whether those tokens are more concentrated or held more widely, and if they're moving or idle. And uh, in today's overview, we'll dive into all of these categories uh, and um, with you all walk through approaches, methods, examples of calculating metrics in each of these buckets, both kind of fundamental basic things and uh, examples of some advanced metrics using Flipside. Let's dive right in with um, a user-oriented look at Web3 project adoption. So in the, when we're looking at users, uh, we're really aiming to get an accurate understanding of user address activity. And this could range from looking at how popular the project is. So that would be something like daily or weekly or monthly user addresses. This could also look like something more nuanced, drilling down, breaking down um, active addresses into new versus returning ones, day in and day out. 
uh, or this can be an in-depth analysis of user retention and who comes back to the project. So as an example, um, you could calculate daily new and daily active addresses by using Flipside spec transaction table. And I'll walk you through this query briefly. So this is um, an example of an open source query, which is forked from one of the analysts from our robust analyst community. Uh, and you can also fork it here in the upper right corner and adapt it for your needs and kind of tweak and change things and produce an analysis. So in this example, we'll look at linear blockchain uh, as kind of the protocol as a whole. Um, and the table that you use is called fact transactions. And it's a universal kind of really basic table that you will find on flip side when you're analyzing other blockchains as well. So here I have the data explorer open on the left. And if you head into a chain like near, you'll have a four fact transactions table. You can get a lot of things from it. Um, the, metric that this query is pulling up is um, daily active addresses, which you get by looking at transaction signers. Uh, and here you also find each user's first ever transaction. That so that helps you understand you know, how many addresses are new and see um, what new user kind of flow is like when it's coming in. Um, so when you run this query, here on the right side. This is what your results are going to look like. I've rerun this. And you can also visualize to understand your new users or your active users better. So in this example, in the data um, in, in the data visualization, you see this line graph with you kind know, of how many unique wallets addresses are coming on new overall, and it's kind of cumulative. So we're heading towards millions, a uh, few million here. And on the bottom here, you've got daily breakdown as kind of a bar chart of those same new user addresses, the spike here in September. Um, yeah, like I said, you can use fact transaction tables for a lot of things. So to add to your user analysis and user understanding, you can get grab transaction count, transaction volume to just you know, round out the picture. And that's our first example. And you'll be able to take a look either in the chat or um, after the, the workshop by looking at the query yourself, working it, playing with it, adapting it. And if you're looking for something more advanced to really understand the project's users, user adoption, um, you could be looking at something like user retention over time. So we won't get into this one in a lot of detail, but um, I'll show you a great example from um, one of our community analysts who've uh, laid out the methodology and also put some examples together that you can also look at. So you can track an extent at which users who maybe first onboarded first to use a project at a certain time. So for example, this group here first joined a year ago, um, you can see over time if they're coming back. So you can, in this particular example, you'd see uh, blur, NFT buyers and blur who joined, let's say a year ago, six months from their first, when they first discovered the product, 30% of them were still using it, still buying their NFTs. And now a year later, 10% are still there. And that kind of changes from early adopters to later groups as well. All of that analysis is something you'll be able to pull up. And uh, there are more really helpful insights to get, gain from user analysis. So from kind of understanding what influences this user behavior and new addresses and uh, people coming back to making comparisons uh, that GJ will talk about a bit more. Yeah, thanks, Marina. I wanted to talk a little bit more about retention specifically, something that you frequently will see in comparisons of blockchains and blockchain adoption is daily active users or monthly active users. Active wallets is one that comes up quite a bit, but no one defines these precisely the same way. And so if you're just looking at active wallets there's a level of nuance there that you really wanna be able to present to make a compelling case. This is an analysis we had recently from one of our teams, uh, TK Research, 
who uh, has done some really amazing work. You can see the tweet here and it compares the various layer twos, but really importantly, it does it by comparing them all apples to apples across the same set of metrics. So the value of having really good data and also uh, understanding what metrics you're looking at and being able to compare things side by side is that it enables this type of comparison. It lets you really understand where should you be looking? Uh, if you're an investor, where do you put your capital or deploy your capital based on health metrics or various blockchains? That's only really possible and effective if you're comparing protocols by the same metrics and using the same uh, baseline. And you need great data to make that possible. And that's something that we're happy to do at Flipside. So the bottom line, the TLDR there, before I hand it back to Marina, be really clear about what metrics you're defining and how you're defining them. And then everyone that you're looking at, if you're looking at an entire landscape as an analyst, or if you're creating a research report, or even if you're just looking as an investor about where to allocate, make sure that you're comparing apples to apples and that you're checking data and that everyone is using the same metrics in that data to enable a true apples to apples comparison. Uh, Marina, back to you. Thanks, DJ. Yeah, that's super important. And the flip side allows you to pull up all the data and compare side by side and really going to standardize your metrics across chains. And yeah, that's that's your user research. There is more depth that you can get into. So hopefully if you're interested, you check out our examples and you also explore the Discover page on Flipside for more community user research of Web3 projects. Let's um, look at what else we have. Let's look at builder analysis. And let me reload that screen there for a sec. Just one moment there. Here we are. Um, so having looked at kind of the user side and the um, uh, people and wallet addresses. There are also really important insights that you can be getting from um, understanding who creates the products that users use and kind of the use cases that are being created to grow the ecosystem. And that's um, having a look at developers and how robust the builder side of a protocol is and the uh, smart contracts that come out of it. So we have an example here as well to look at. Um, to look at your number of smart contracts deployed for a project, as well as number of active blockchain developers who ship them to understand uh, what's kind of coming out on the supply side. So here you can use the event function calls table. This example is for the near blockchain. Once again, um, this helps you get the transactions that deploy a new contract. So here is the action name uh, and those addresses, the uh, wallet addresses who are signers, aka the developers, developer addresses. And similarly with um, other chains, in addition to near, you can pull up these metrics using tables like function calls or event logs for different chains. So that's a quick look at builders. And um, as our final group of uh, metrics and group of insights today, we'll look at the liquidity side of the web project and web three project and what's going on with the, with the token. So here, um, as we mentioned, the first metric one might reach for is something like TVL, but um, deeper insights on project adoption really come from understanding um, what else is going on with the token if there is one. Um, project kind of adoption through holding the token, through interacting, transferring it. Uh, and you can use flip side data to paint a picture of something like the token holder distribution. Here's um, an example query, and we won't have um, a lot of time to go into it in depth, but um, let's walk through its essential parts together. And it's in the chat and you can explore it after on your own as well and fork. Um, so the SQL query here calculates token balances um, using our tra transfer tables for near. Once again, that's uh, the theme for our examples today. Um, it, it does. It kind of gets to the balances um, by finding the amounts that are received and then sent, and kind of subtracting one from the other. And 
Then the interesting part is that one could kind of get an, an additional layer of insight by categorizing folder addresses into buckets. So from anywhere from Wales to kind of mid-tier to smaller accounts, uh, which is right here. And you could um, also kind of exclude any treasuries or known um, large smart contracts that are holding a lot of tokens to get a really kind of accurate picture of the hopefully the more human side of this. So as I mentioned here, for Nier, we used a um, token transfers table. But if you are um, analyzing, for example, Ethereum, um, the flip side team has constructed a couple of really cool tables there, uh, current balances and uh, balance changes over time, or balance deltas. You'll find those, I'll show you really quick, in um, Ethereum core current balances and balance deltas. So this would help you to just fast track a step and not have to calculate these balances yourself. And um, if you would like to take a look at the queries in the chat and the overall kind of understanding tokens distribution helps you glean a lot of extra uh, things and insights. So things like how broad user-based is, is it kind of a lot of smaller holders what the price impact might be and impact on the project if a whale um, conducted a transaction or did a certain type of activity and kind of how many of those whales there are and how big they are and um, more insights like that. And if you're looking to get a little more advanced with the token distribution and liquidity and um, that area of a project's use, um, you could under try to understand how idle or how actively circulating a token might be. Uh, so for this, you could construct a metric called mean point age. So what it represents is kind of the average span of time that one token, maybe one ETH, one Bitcoin, one Sol, uh, would sit in wallets and, and smart contracts. And uh, mean point age is usually associated with price impact, so kind of do people hold or do they swap or kind of get rid of the token for something else? But there's uh, for something like an in-app token, for example, you could um, look at this as an additional measure of how actively the product is used, the app is used. Is a token claimed, redeemed a lot and kind of generally um, circulating around. So that would be associated with a lower, um, lower value here. There is a dashboard. Uh, which I won't get into detail right now, but I built this dashboard as a template so you can peruse it after the webinar. And uh, there is a, oh, there we go. There are queries that you can also kind of use and fork and see an example. Let's come back and that, um, that takes us through all the metrics that we wanted to show you all today. So um, I'll start wrapping it up. So when you set out to understand something like Web3 project adoption or Web3 protocol adoption, uh, I hope we've um, been able to show here with GJ today that we can both go kind of wide and deep and really get a lot of extra insights by going beyond one or two standard metrics. So you could be looking at users, developers, the token, and uh, that can help you make better decisions, more informed, more nuanced, and a more robust data-driven approach. And as you saw with these examples here today, um, yes, Flipside has the data tables to enable you to construct all of these metrics, but just as importantly, and something that we find really valuable is our um, so-called analyst layer. So our user community is this thriving ecosystem that can help inspire you um, for new metrics to calculate, for methodology, for um, things you can fork that are open source and get the best data. And um, if you can think of you know type of insight or a data use case, most likely um, these analysts have built some sort of open source queries that you can find and inspire get inspired by. And uh, we just hopefully saw that, some of that today with our tour across Web3 adoption analysis. Um, so Gigi, I'll hand it over to you if you had any closing thoughts or if we wanted to jump over to some questions.
They yeah, haven't... thanks, Marina. We'll definitely get to Q and A in a sec. I see we've got one already. Just a couple things to wrap up what Marina had said. We are grateful to all of you for joining us. If you want to check out some of the queries, some of the dashboards shared more than the 100,000 dashboards that Flipside community members uh, and teams have already made, then we'll drop a link to our data studio, which is the tool that you saw. Uh, we'll drop that in chat so you can sign up for an account, explore what others have done, fork their queries, get started with your own analysis and explore what's possible. Uh, get into our curated data sets, which make all this analysis possible and make it easier, frankly, to get to the type of insights beyond just TVL or active users, as Marina showed. So much more is possible and Data Studio helps you get there. And then if you wanna go further still and get access to our most powerful feature sets uh, and programmatic access to our data, we'll also drop a link uh, to a free trial for our pro features. Uh, and we definitely encourage folks to give that a whirl as well, especially if you have specialized or enterprise use cases or you are a professional investor and analyst, a data scientist, uh, there's a lot there to dig into to take all of this to the next level. So let's go get into some questions. Um, Marina, I'll kick this one over to you. Uh, how would you approach evaluating fees over time in a comparison query? Yeah, great question. Uh, I'm at this moment of screen share to try and pull up the table, but um, Flipside gives you um, transaction fees in the transaction tables, oftentimes in uh, both the native token and in the dollar equivalent. So you can pull that up across chains. Let me see really quick if I can show a table here. But yeah, it's, um, it's very doable. It's a very um, common analysis, very prevalent analysis that folks in the community have pulled up and um, others have as well. Okay, I'm gonna show you real quick my screen. Um, all right, so hopefully you can see, I'm pulling up a preview of our Ethereum core back transactions table, which is down here. As I mentioned that, that you'll find for um, any chain you can analyze and it's really, really useful and versatile. And so I've done a preview by clicking on this preview button here, and this is what we have. So once you scroll through all the data that you have available, you got the transaction fees. And um, this, so this is Ethereum. So this is going to be in native ETH. And you can also, um, you can look at documentation for the tables to kind of figure that out, or you could, um, look up a transaction hash and put it in a block explorer, like an ether scan and kind of match up the data that you have there and kind of the extra layer as well that you have there and complement it with everything you find here. But yeah, that's, there's a really easy way to pull out our fees, which we hope you try out. Uh, TJ, thanks. back to you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, for anyone else, please submit uh, Q and A as well. Uh, I think this one isn't exactly uh, a question; uh, it's more of an offer. Uh, Marina, I would like to interview you for my book related with data science for Web three. I have Dune and Covalent. Would love to have Flipside on it too. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, if that's uh, something that you need to answer right off the bat, but uh, we're happy to connect you, Gabriella. Uh, we can connect you with Marina afterward. Uh, and Marina, maybe we can uh, get you published uh, or get you in something that will be published. Uh, we certainly would love to talk with you, Gabriella, for sure. Yeah, come come talk to us. We would love to, to share uh, and love to meet you. Yeah, I, I will comment on that, uh, at least briefly, in data science for Web3. Something that we you know, take very seriously is the ability to take our data and pull it into uh, Python, for example, or notebook-style tools 
um, or some people really like to use R. Um, and then, you know, not to, to spoil too much, but we definitely have more coming down the road for the ability to be able to use uh, in some of our more advanced feature sets uh, to keep data private and use it and manipulate it in your own environment, uh, which can be valuable for a number of applications. Uh, and so, you know, we see a lot of analysts activate, but we do have a number of data scientists in our community uh, who really enjoy some of those features as well. Uh, can we get Marina's Twitter or X profile? Marina, obviously, question for you. Absolutely. I'm going to drop DJ and mine Twitter in the chat right now. Come say hi once again. We love to chat. Does that work? As I got it. This I think it does. Perfect. Yep. Uh, not perfectly formatted, but you'll be able to find both of us there. Uh, Marina is much more interesting to follow. I think for me, it's mostly renewable energy, bad sports tweets, uh, and then retweeting other people's amazing work. You flatter, <laughs> you flatter. Come follow us, come follow Flipside, which also shares a lot of really great analytics, a lot of the community stuff. There's uh, there's, there's a cool dashboard or two on Flipside's Twitter today that just came out with some new features. Yeah. DM, follow, check us out, say hello. Yeah, I think we've probably got time for one more question uh, before we wrap, if anybody uh, has something they'd like us to conclude with. I think while we wait to see if anything comes in, one thing I wanted to talk about if we had time and we have a little uh, is to dig further into metrics across blockchains. So we looked at, for example, comparing various layer twos uh, and Ethereum scaling solutions, but something that you know we're digging into a little bit internally with our data science team is comparing across blockchains and specifically looking at ecosystems where fees really matter uh, versus extremely low fee, low cost ecosystems. So what is the proper way to compare health and adoption between Ethereum mainnet, for example, and a Solana or an Avalanche or a Polygon or a Near, where transaction fees are so low and the main focus is on acquiring new builders and developers and creating a flourishing DAC ecosystem as opposed to generating fees via transactions. So these are the type of nuances where it's really helpful to see what other people have done. Uh, and one of the things you can do is check out our community dashboards and our community library and use the work of others to get started. Uh, there's so much work that's already been done to help you, uh, you know, lay the foundation for your own work. So again, definitely check out uh, our Discover page on flipsidecrypto.xyz and give the pro trial uh, a test, a test run, if you're thinking that there may be value to you for your own, either your portfolio or your business applications. Uh, we would love to see you there as well. I think we're probably out of questions. So thank you all once again. Thank you to Marina for walking us through. We're hoping to do you know many more of these in the coming weeks and months. So your feedback, of course, is welcome to us. Uh, check us out on Twitter. Uh, you know, check out Data Studio. Check out the trials, uh, and we'll look forward to seeing all of you uh, on our subsequent webinars. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for sticking around. Um, and if you have more questions, you can get in touch with us. Twitter, Flipside, Discord is also a really thriving place. I can't not plug. We love hanging out there. Uh, so yeah, say say hi and give us your feedback and bring any more questions. And I hope you try out uh, some of these queries or any other queries or pull some cool metrics. Right on. Awesome. We'll wrap it there. Yeah, Andre, over to you to take us out. It was amazing, very insightful. Appreciate it. Um, and thanks everyone for coming to our webinar. Uh, we look forward to host many more in the upcoming weeks. Um, and thanks again. Have a great day. Bye, everyone.